Good morning. Professor John Talent of Paleobiology, Macquarie University, Australia is no more and came yesterday. John Talent would be remembered for his contributions to paleontology, his contributions to paleobiogeography, and we in India would remember him for exposing the Himalayan hooks, called so in an editorial by Nature in September 1989. John had been suspecting some wrongdoing for long, but he thought the truth will come out on its own. And I came to know after reading that editorial in Nature, which had caused telephones from across the world to Chandigarh. From Sydney Morning Herald, New York Times, BBC, from France, from Germany. Name any, any news channel or newspaper. They were calling India to ask Professor Vijay Gupta his version. His reply to John. Later I came to know John Talent had actually raised this issue in the Calgary meeting in 1987. And following that, a huge 60-page monograph was published by John Talent together with three Indian colleagues. Arvind Jain was the last, Rajendra Goyal, Nair. There were four or five, I don't uh, exactly remember, but uh, I know there was John Talent for the first author and uh, perhaps Ruth Mawson was there. That monograph didn't uh, actually get the focus. But when this, uh, when the greatest magazine of science in the world, Nature, published that editorial call, calling Himalayan hoax, things were things became very serious and hot. And uh, soon a lot was published, a lot was said on the TV channels and uh, newspapers and it was the talk of the town. Not many so easily believed the charges. It looked unbelievable. I remember having written to John Talent that one of the samples you question, the Spiti, the Takche Nala sample, was mine. I stand by the field data. I had made the collection. I had the column. He wrote me back. I like your spirit of defending a colleague in distress. But let me tell you, you're not the only one in the world who has been duped. You, if you have the sample, recheck it. Macerate your sample again, independently, outside. And I did it. I didn't find even a shred of conodont which had been found when I left the sample with Professor Vijay Gupta with the request to show it to Kirill Bodhara, a famous Bulgarian conorant expert who was his guest. Well, there were 124 or more co-authors, half from India, and almost half from abroad. Big shots across the world were co-authors. If geologists in India trusted Professor Vijay Gupta, there was no reason for them not to trust him. 
there were big names of India also associated. He had done his PhD with the Professor M. R. Sahani, who was himself a, a doctorate from Cambridge. He had uh, published uh, papers in Nature in the best magazines of the world, with the best people of the world. John Talent initially was looked on as somebody who was doing witch hunting of an Indian paleontologist, but gradually and slowly it came out that every bit of what he was saying with great caution, John Talent had perhaps faced a legal threat following his reading that paper in Calgary where Professor Vijay Gupta was also present in 87 and he had then and there threatened him with legal action and perhaps uh, later sent him a legal notice too with the result that what was published in Senckenberg Museum monograph in 89 or 88 perhaps was legally vetted by experts because no journal wanted to take any risk. That was a huge monograph which had been sent by them to our Vice Chancellor, Professor Bamba. It was so technical, full of jargon. The word fraud was never used in that monograph. There were hints. It said there contamination. Salting was also not used perhaps. I don't distinctly remember. But I remember the whole hint was towards contamination of a sample. Contaminations can happen in laboratories. Contaminations can happen even during, even in the field collections made during the transport. But contaminations happening from typical American locality into all the Himalayan localities was perhaps not imagined. In fact, I said that you're saying that it doesn't occur outside North Iwan's locality is disproved because it occurs in the Himalayan localities. Why don't you revise your interpretations? I, I, I said all that I could as a sincere student of paleontology and as a friend and well-wisher of Professor Vijayakup. I initially thought that he was being targeted unfairly. And when I found my sample was barren, I with great humility approached him and asked him that what's the story? Why is my sample barren now? And how come so many Conorant's microfossils were found in your lab? All that he said is a story which I later published in Nature in a two-page commentary article. There were others too publishing. Professor Bhatia published. Uday Kumar Bassi published. And uh, it, it received great publicity. People said that whistleblowers, the co-authors, the associates have blown the whistle. They've spoken out. And what happened later is a long story which I don't want to speak now. My purpose of uh, this brief chat in the morning on my camera is to pay my homage, heartfelt, great sympathy to all the colleagues and friends of John Talent. I'm one of those. John Talent did a great service to cleaning up the Himalayan paleontology database. He did a great service and hard work of many decades. I feel sad that the seniors in India do not raise the issue out of so many fears, 
or temptations or pressures on them, but it was left to an Australian far off to do this job and uh, he will be ever remembered for doing this great service to science of paleontology. It happens, no fault finding, to trust is normal, people trusted. Professor Vijay Gupta, who was our very respectable colleague, who was a very senior colleague with great reputation in our university. But today the science of paleontology across the world has learnt lessons. The Indian paleontology has grown. Huge database has been collected in the last four decades and all corrections made. John Talent will be remembered for this human service to Himalayan paleontological database. As he said, the entire refereeing system, the editorial system of scientific journals, how to take the blame for what happened. Questions should have been raised and they were not raised. It can happen because big names were involved in papers, in great journals like Nature with Professor Vijay Gupta. John Talent became a close friend. We did field work in Nepal together. We did field work in Pakistan, Peshawar and Salt Range together. And we traveled across Australia during the first IPC International Paleontological Congress 2002. We were in close touch. I remember when I sent my first article to Nature uh, on this issue. It was my second paper in Nature. First one I had published with Professor Patwardhan way back when we were very young. He was not yet 30 and I was just 21. I never knew that I will have the chance to write this article in Nature. I don't want to discuss that here, but sending that was a great experience for me. People knew that I'm unhappy, my sample has turned barren, and I'm writing. There were colleagues who were no more, who were my teachers, who tell me that it's not in your interest to write, keep quiet. But my conscience and scientific tradition demanded that when I came to know a truth, I should document it. And getting that across to Nature Editorial Office and making corrections in the proof was a huge challenge. Fax was very new to the city. There were very only one place where I had some personal connection. I got the proof on facts and we made the corrections on telephone of uh, my landlords where I used to live in a rented accommodation. John Talent, we had no telephone uh, at our place and I remember with gratitude the kindness of my landlords. We were like a family who allowed us to use that, uh, their telephone. They understood that uh, I had done a great service to science by writing that article. I remember my kids were very young. Their friends used to wonder what their papa has written in London. Why so much publicity? Gradually, my daughter was doing psychology honors in BA. Uh, in Government College for Girls. The issue was in papers and when it would be talked by her teacher, she would smile <laughs> and she would tell me that her teacher was talking about the uh, scientific ethics, etc., etc. We'll miss you, John. You were a rare type of geologist with great courage, perseverance, and dedication to the cause. 
I remember when I was in UK in 96. Many universities invited me to speak on the issue. And I was a guest of Dennis Bates in Wales. He took me to Bristol and uh, we had a long session in the Bristol University discussing this. I clarified to them that it's no, it's not an Indian issue or Australian issue. It's an issue, it's a universal issue. Credit is to Indians too. And so that uh, fear of many compatriots that Indian paleontology would get defamed didn't stick because Indian paleontologists were with great risk speaking out, writing. Those guys who were abroad had no risk. Today, with no ill will to any of the persons involved, I say what happened has taught lessons to the world. What happened has taught lessons to PhD guides. And it has also taught lessons to young collaborators who should be objective in assessing a collaborator, not be taken in by his foreign connections or foreign trips. And foreigners outside India who are, have got interest in Indian geology should also understand that they should not rush to grab a sample given to them. They should have the patience to travel and do the field work. Unlike China and other countries, India is a free country. We allow you to come and work. But if you have some fears, speak out. Don't delay. John Tellen taught a lot, lot to us. John Tellen did great service. For a long time, for a long time, John Tellen would be remembered. Nature published nearly 14 editorials on the issue. There was no magazine in the world, popular or science, science magazine, who didn't write on the issue. Our university and the Indian system took time to realize what had happened. But when it realized, all corrections were made. We stand corrected. We stand enlightened and educated. Thank you, John. Thank you for the service done to science.